I've got a Hyper-V virtual machine installed on my server two server, and it's being replicated over to server one. So if I click on server one, you can see that the virtual machine VM one has been replicated, but the state is currently off. So it's in a standby mode. I'll go back to server two, and I'd like to take a look at my replication options. I'm going to right click on the server and choose replication. And you can see there's four different options. We have the planned failover when we're ready to fail over to the other server, pause replication, view health and remove replication. I want to start at the bottom. Remove replication basically just turns the replication off and it will remove that server from server one. If I go to pause replication, that's a good idea in case I need to restart one of the host servers that the Hyper-V virtual machines are running on. If I choose view replication health, it'll tell me whether or not the replication data is actually working. And you can see here it is. You can see the amount of time it took to replicate, the average size, maximum size, etc. I'm going to close that and now I'm going to choose to fail over. So once again, the server on server two called VM one is in the running state on server one. It's in the off state. So I'm going to right click, choose replication and choose planned failover. And here's a box that pops up that tells me some information about the failover before I actually perform it. One is I can choose to reverse the replication direction after failover. This is really useful because what it'll do is it will continue the replication, but it'll go from one to two instead of server two back to server one. I can also choose to start the replication virtual machine after it fails over. So once it fails over, the virtual machine will start up and then we'll continue serving the clients. And here we see a prerequisite check. So it says check that the virtual machine is turned off, the rep club virtual machine state, the check configuration for allowing reverse replication. All that is there to just remind me to make sure that this information is set up the way it's supposed to be for the failover. Before I can go ahead and do the failover, I've got to shut this server down. So I'm going to choose to shut down. You could choose turn off if it gets stuck, but that's like yanking the plug out of the computer and you could cause some damage. It's better to choose the shut down and that will do a graceful shutdown of that virtual machine. So we can take a look at that by just clicking here and opening up the console and it's showing that it is gracefully shutting down. Now, once that's turned off, I'll go ahead and close this box and I'll go back into the planned failover and the failover should now work. So I'll right click, I'll choose planned failover once again, choose the reverse replication when done and choose failover. Now you can see it's in progress and this could take a few minutes. It could take a little bit longer just depending on how fast your server is. And when it's all done, we should be able to see that the server has started on server one, and I should be able to log right into it. Failover completed successfully. So I'll click close. I'll go over to server one and take a look. The server on server one called VM one is starting up. And the virtual machine was successfully started. Another option is in case server one is no longer usable because it has become corrupt or some other hardware problem is you can go into server two, for instance, and you can see the server is off because the replication has been reversed. And I can right click on that and choose replication and choose failover. So it's not a planned failover. It's just a failover. And what it'll do is it will now say that this server is in charge and will start it up. Now, the reason you don't want to have both virtual machines running on both Hyper-V host servers at the same time is because they both have the same name. They have the same IP address and that will cause a problem when both of them try to run at the same time. It will make it so neither one of them will work properly until one of them is shut down. Failover in a Hyper-V server is a great way to add failover capabilities to your virtual machine infrastructure.